Okay, Tyler Crow, we're going to go back to the well or back to the wind farm, as it were. It's time to talk about Next Era Energy Partners. We've talked about it. We've talked about its parent company, Next Era Energy. We've done multiple videos looking at the stock prices have come down a tremendous amount. A lot of people out there are saying this is an absolute buy right now. You and I have both been a little more cautious because of one thing, Tyler, what is that one thing that we've been cautioning investors about? Debt. Yes, debt. Debt maturities and their cost of servicing their existing capital structure are set to go up. So this is going to be that video where we're going to go through their debt and we're going to highlight what the risk is for investors and why investors should at least be a little bit cautious right now as things play out with that debt profile. I'm Jason Hall. This is The Smattering. Our video is sponsored by The Motley Fool. If you're looking for even more great stock ideas, go to our special link, fool.com forward slash The Smattering. Motley Fool is going to give you its 10 best stocks to buy right now. Okay, Tyler, next year, Energy Partners, the stock is down a 60%, lot. definitely a lot. And the thing is, Tyler, it's brought down its, all of its other yield co-partners, Atlantica Sustainable Infrastructure, Clearway Energy, Brookfield Renewable. They've all come down along with it. The yield was starting to increase uh, next to our energy partners. And we started going like, look, for a business that has relied a lot on equity to finance a lot of things they've been doing. Next year, energy partners back in 2019 had 57, 58 million shares. It has 93 million shares. So over the past five years, it's the better part of doubled its share count. You go back. So we're not talking about five or six percent equity dilution a year. We're talking about a massive, massive right. amount of equity issuance to buy stuff from its parent company. Which, as we've said previously, it's not the end of the world when your yield is low enough that you can acquire yeah. assets that are going to produce higher than the yield and the dividend you pay. I don't think there's any argument that it's been a smart use of equity. Right. But with equity costing much more today. And that's what management basically said, look, we can't make 12% growth work. It just, it's not feasible in this cost of capital environment, which was a smart thing to say. That's exactly the thing I would want to hear from them. So they, they slowed down their distribution growth about half of what it was doing. And on top of that, they said, we're not going to issue any new equity all the way out until I think it was 2026 or 2027. Before investors should be putting any money into the stock, we need to understand the debt profile. What's it going to cost as its debt matures? When is it going to mature? Let's talk about the debt profile, where things stand right now, and then we can end the video on kind of our, our thoughts looking forward. Yeah. So let, I'm going to go back to the 10K because that's where you're going to get the most information mm -hmm. when it comes to debt profiles. This is the 10K being the annual report right. where it actually breaks out each of these tranches right. of debt, what they're paying on in yield, when it matures. And you, you get a much better breakdown. The, the quarterly reports, basically, they're telling you new debt. They're not even really breaking out their old debt right. at all. Tyler, what I'm going to do, I'm going to pull up a screen share here, and we can actually go through those tranches on the screen so people can see what we're talking about. $1.6 billion in unsecured convertible notes with a 0.78% uh, interest rate. So basically, between 2024, 2026, all this debt will convert into equity if the equity is at a certain price. And of the debt issuance that they've had on that, that specific unsecured convertible notes, the lowest price that all of those can do uh, on the uh, tranches is $75. Now, right now, we're looking at a stock price in the low 20s right now, meaning that the people it ain't gonna who, convert. Right, that's, the people that's who own this are not going to be converting this right. over to their equity because it's like, well, no, I was going to buy it at 75 and that was going to be my gain. It's at, at 20 something. It's, it's not what I expect it to be. So with that, it's much more likely that all of that convertible debt is going to have to be refinanced as regular debt. But the bottom line being is that cost is going to go up significantly. In an environment where 10-year treasuries is five something, and you're seeing corporate debt being issued at higher than that right now, with all of this debt coming due in the next couple of years, you can almost guarantee that this debt that's existing on the books and any additional debt that they take on for other projects is going to come in at significantly higher interest rates, which means their interest expenses go up, and that means less money available for their dividend. Well, Even there's more to it too, because we have that, again, that ultra cheap, uh, ultra cheap convertible notes, which like I said, is almost the, the chance of it converting is a rounding error from zero. And then we have another $1.8 billion in debt at 
that mostly matures over a similar period of time. So we have a substantial amount of its total debt profile that's going to be maturing over the next two and a half years. And again, 0.78%, 4.22%. Here's the thing too. This is not an investment grade rated business. And that's really, really important because I can promise you the ratings agencies are looking at its debt maturities, its existing debt profiles, the returns that it, ex that it generates. Maybe I'm completely wrong about this, but my prediction, this is not going to become an investment grade rated business in a deteriorating environment. And the average yield that we're seeing for high yield rated corporate debt, junk debt, the colloquial it's, term, yeah. is, is closer to 9%. So maybe again, they're pretty, they're right on the cusp of, of investment grade, but it's certainly going to be more than 0.78%. And it's almost certain that that 4.22 that they're getting on the other tranches that are going to be maturing at the same period are all going to adjust substantially higher, substantially yeah. higher. Right. And I think that's the important thing to remember. And like you said, the money has to come from somewhere. I think this is the example that like a lot of people who are selling Next Era Energy Partners and are concerned about its yield are looking precisely at this, saying this does not bode well for its future dividend payments. And there is a legitimate concern that this decline in dividend growth turns into a dividend growth pause, turns into a trimming of its dividend in the future. I'm not predicting those things to happen, but it would be naive to think that those aren't real scenarios that could happen in the next two years, provided that we remain in this current interest rate environment. Sure, if interest rates decline 3% from here, maybe it's not as big of a problem. Then we're in a different problem because we're probably having to juice the economy. That's neither here nor there. Either way, if we maintain where we are today, uh, prevailing interest rate environments, higher costs of capital, these are real possibilities that investors need to consider. Tyler, I want to use an example from history that you and I both um, lived and invested through um, where a company was in a similar situation. Interest rates weren't the catalyst, but was in a similar situation with its balance sheets and with debt maturities and its growth plans. Um, and, the, and the decision about the dividend essentially was taken away from the board's hand, was taken away from the business's hand. And that's Kinder Morgan. If you go back to late- I thought you'd say Kinder Morgan. I was like, I was yeah, trying was to figure late, it out. And I was like, yeah, it's Kinder Morgan, isn't it? This was late 2015. And I was a shareholder at the time. And I bought what management said. And I, I swallowed a hook, line, and sinker because they were being honest and they were being truthful with what they said. And what they said was, our dividend is sustainable from our existing and future cash flows and our ability to raise capital for our growth plans should be secure. That's essentially what they said. The thing that changed was when it was time to take on new debt for new capital growth plans, their lenders got cold feet. Their lenders said, we're not comfortable with your balance sheet. You need to free up cash before we will extend debt on terms that are amenable for you and your return profile. And they had to cut the dividend. I think they cut it like 70%. They had two choices. They could stop growing and maintain the dividend and then potentially run into the same problem when it was time to roll debt down the road, or they could take the, take the dividend cut and, and, and refocus back the growth. And the dividend now, still with Kinder Morgan, that was in 2016 that they cut the dividend. It was, this was like late 2015, early 2016, this all played out. The dividend is still somewhere around half what it was before they had to cut that payout. And there is a chance, there is a chance that management and Next Era Energy and Next Era Energy Partners are slow walking this right now, trying to get ahead of it and make sure that their access to capital is not hindered. But there is a very real possibility that their lenders say that the, these large institutional buyers or issuers of debt say, okay, you need a billion bucks. Well, you need to free up cash flow, and they have to cut the dividend simply to get that debt. So that's, that's a reality. I think a lot of investors are not considering. I love this business, Tyler. I love its long-term potential. I'm going to continue to hold. I want to caution anybody that's investing for income that you need in the moment, that this is near-term income, that this is a stock that I think is far riskier than investors realize. If you're thinking long-term about profits, capital gains, the stock rebounding, and you're less concerned about the dividend today, and you're thinking about five or 10 years down the road, sure. I, I think the risk reward is really, really attractive. 
I don't think investors that need the income right now should be looking at next era energy partners.